Alright guys, how's it going? Some of you may be watching my channel for the first time, interested in what this AMD Crimson Relive is all about. Relive is of course AMD's answer to Nvidia's Shadow Play, and it's probably got some of you thinking about a switch to AMD, or maybe you've already made that switch and you want to know how to get started with AMD software. So let's just start with that right there. For those of you that are simply interested in the benchmarks, you can fast forward to around seven and a half minutes of the video as the benchmarks are right at the very end. Now normally I would use a program called Display Driver Uninstaller for getting rid of my old drivers, and you can certainly do that. I will leave a link in the description below and you can download it from Guru3D. Now once you extract the installer and run the program, you can choose whether or not to launch normally or in safe mode. Normally I would launch Display Driver Uninstaller in safe mode, but for now I'm going to stick to normal. And all you have to do is select what graphics cards drivers you've got already on your system from this drop down menu. So if you've got Nvidia, select that and clean and restart. It really is that simple. By all means do it for all of them, because you may have some legacy drivers hanging around on your system anyway. The new Crimson Relive driver however also has a fresh uninstall option in the driver. So let's run through it from this. It takes about a minute or two to extract it all. Now you're going to click on this local driver. It shows you what you've already got installed if you've got AMD drivers, but you're going to click on local driver anyway. You can also check this box to keep the system up to date. And you've got a choice of express or custom install. If you then click on custom install, you get the choice of a clean install or just a normal install. If you do choose a clean install, it will restart your PC. So that's what I'm going to do. And the installation process will continue. Now the system will restart. Right, with a bit of luck, that all went smoothly. It didn't for me and I had to reinstall it again. You may have to do that as well. But after it's all installed, you've got your little crimson icon down here, Radeon settings, which if you double click on, brings up your AMD Radeon settings. It's actually very nice, crimson looks great. I've got a bunch of tabs here which I'm not going to go into. The only tab we're interested in is Relive, so let's click on that. Right, now you probably get a little message down here saying that Relive has been successfully installed. So what you have to do now is enable it. And it's as simple as clicking on that tab. Now, Relive and Shadowplay are used mostly for recording games, but you can also record the desktop. It's as simple as clicking on this tab. I'm not going to bother with that for now though, and instead we're going to choose a save folder. Now, this is where all your saved videos go. You're probably aware that video does take up quite a lot of space on your hard disk, and I certainly don't want it on my C drive. Now, I do actually have a bunch of other drives, and I keep all my videos on my work drive, in my video folder, and within my video folder, I have a Relive, and of course a Shadowplay folder. You probably know how to create a folder on a hard drive, but from this you can actually just right click and new folder. Now like I said I'm going to choose Relive, and now you can see that the videos will be saved to F Video Relive in my case. If you've got a webcam you can select it here, and also your default audio capture device, which in my case is my Blue Yeti microphone. Now you're going to want to set hotkeys for all this stuff. Now by default, pressing Alt and Z brings up the Relive toolbar. Now you can see here that you can choose settings, which allows you to choose your microphone, your camera, the status indicator that tells you when it's recording, and here you can also put the instant replay on or off, recording the desktop as we talked about before, and you can also change the position of this toolbar. If you want to, you can also click on this record button to record, rather than using a hotkey. Or if you're already connected to your streaming service, rather than recording, you can choose to stream. And finally, you can take a screenshot. I generally don't bother to use the bar, and prefer to set hotkeys for all this stuff. The one that I use the most is simply toggle recording. I'm going to click on this tab, and I prefer to use Control and F8. In actual fact, I prefer to use scroll lock on the keyboard for this kind of thing, but the Relive software will not allow me to rebind the scroll lock key. It is brand new, and hopefully AMD will add more keybinds for this before too long. So whatever method you prefer, just select it here, set up a hotkey, or use the toolbar. Now I'm actually going to change the toolbar hotkey to Control alt z 
because Alt and Z is a key bind in World of Warcraft, which is a game I play a lot. Now if we click on the recording tab though, we can see a bunch of other options. You've got your recording profile, which basically just sets this bitrate I believe. It defaults to high, however the default bitrate is only 30 megabits per second. Shadowplay's default is 50 megabits per second. And because I want to compare them apples to apples, we're going to increase this all the way up to 50 megabits per second. Now somewhat disappointingly, right now, Relive is only capable of recording at 30 or 60 frames per second, and that depends on the resolution. For example, if you set it to 4K or 1440p, right now with the RX 480, the best it can do is 30 frames per second. For many people, that's simply not going to be good enough. But for the vast majority, 1080p and 60 frames per second is exactly what you want. I think some of the Fury cards are capable of higher resolution. This is just going to take a little bit of time, but hopefully within a few months, most of the cards should be able to record at higher resolution and higher frame rate. There are two different types of encoding, AVC and HEVC. HEVC is more for 4K and a bit more for the future than right now. So we're going to stick with AVC. We're going to keep the audio bitrate as it is, and I'm not going to bother with instant replay right now. So really, all we did there was increase the bitrate to 50 megabits per second. From the streaming tab, you can set up your Twitch and your YouTube, that sort of thing. Once you've done that, you will stream automatically to these services. And again, you can change the bitrate and all that stuff. And in the final overlay tab, you can choose to show the system information. And then a new tab allows you to choose the area on the screen. I'm not going to bother with that. You can choose to show your camera. And again, you've got a bunch of options for that. And you can also choose to show a custom overlay and choose an image. You should also be able to download some images from amd.com. Right now though, we're only really interested in the recording. So let's get on with it. Right, so in game, it really is this simple. Once the game is loaded, you press your start recording key. In my case, control and F8. You can of course also use the toolbar, but that doesn't actually show up in the video. When you're happy with what you've got, you once again press the recording hotkey and that should save your recording to disk. What we're going to do now though is have a look at some rather interesting benchmarks comparing Relive and Shadowplay and some surprising results. Right, so first up is Deus Ex. We're going to use Relive on the left and Shadowplay on the right. Now this is an RX 480 on the left and a GTX 1060 on the right. But it's important to note that we're not actually benchmarking the cards themselves. What we're actually benchmarking is the difference that Relive and Shadowplay make to the frame rate totals. In normal gaming, the RX 480 scores 55.9 frames per second, while the GTX 1060 scored 48.3 frames per second. While recording with Relive, the frame rate dropped to 54.4 frames per second, while with Shadowplay, the frame rate dropped to 46.3 frames per second. Next up was Fallout 4, and the RX 480 in normal gameplay scored 65.5 frames per second, compared to the GTX 1060's 70.3 frames per second. Once again though, while recording with Relive, the 480 only suffered a very small drop, down to 64.1 frames per second, while the GTX 1060, while recording with Shadowplay, had a drop down to 67.8 frames per second. In percentage terms, Relive's overhead was only 2.2% compared to Shadowplay's 3.7%. And the final game tested was Rise of the Tomb Raider. During normal play, the RX 480 scored 71.6 frames per second, while the GTX 1060 scored 73.2 frames per second. Once again, a very small drop down to only 70 frames per second while using Relive and the RX 480, while the GTX 1060 suffered a drop down to 70.6 frames per second while recording with Shadowplay. Once again, in percentage terms, that is only a drop of 2.3% while using Crimson Relive, while again, Shadowplay had a performance impact of 3.7%. Now, I tested this over and over many, many times, and I believe these numbers are 100% accurate. I'm using the reference RX 480 and a rather heavily overclocked GTX 1060, around 1880 megahertz. But overall, looking at the Relive versus Shadowplay chart, it is very clear indeed that Relive suffers less of a performance impact while recording compared to Shadowplay. There's not an awful lot in it, really you're talking 1-2%, but it was a consistent gap in every game I tested over multiple benchmarks. Here we can see the full results in this chart. 
Again, we're not really benchmarking the graphics cards, although it is quite interesting to see just how close those cards are. So yeah, pretty surprising stuff. I was not expecting Relive to actually be better, but in terms of recording FPS loss, it definitely seems to be doing a better job than Shadowplay, at least with these cards. Now, the testing didn't actually end there either. I also tested Fallout 4 using Plays TV and Mirrorless Action. As a reminder, Relive scored 64.1 frames per second in Fallout 4. As you can see here, that is over three runs averaged. Plays TV only averaged 62.4 frames per second, and Mirrorless Action was down at 61 frames per second on average for Fallout 4. So not only is Relive faster than Shadowplay, it is also faster than Morales Action and Plays TV and is likely to be the fastest recorder out there. Now, all of the video recordings were checked using a program called Media Info. And with this, we can see that Relive had recorded at 51.2 megabits per second compared to 50.1 megabits per second of Shadowplay. So that's the same quality with an identical audio stream. As you can see here, the file sizes are practically identical as well at around about 375 meg per minute. So overall, I have to say, Relive has surprised me with its performance. It does lack the features that Shadowplay has. Shadowplay has been around for a very long time, and this is the first iteration of Relive. But over time, I do expect this to improve by a lot, especially the important stuff like the recording frame rate and the recording resolution. In summary, it is one less excuse for not going with an AMD graphics card. For the average user, it basically matches Shadowplay. And as AMD were keen to point out, you do not need to register in order to use it. Unlike with Shadowplay, which now requires GeForce experience and registration. And that's another reason why competition is so important. I'll catch you later, guys.